Um, I'd like to start with TikTok, if we could, and, and what they're doing with all of the data that they are collecting from American users. And for one thing, I want to get it on the record that TikTok is collecting a lot of data. I mean, a lot. In terms of its terms of service state, I'm going to quote now, that it collects contact details, content you create, and your location. It collects, I'm still quoting, from third-party social network providers and technical and behavioral information about your use of the platform. And it collects information contained in the messages you send through the TikTok platform and information from your phone book. That's a lot of data. It's pretty comparable to what the massive data harvesting machines like Facebook and Google are scooping up. Now, TikTok says that they store American user data either here or in Singapore, not in China. But Ms. Frederick, let me just address this question to you. That doesn't necessarily mean the fact that, that TikTok allegedly stores the data here or in Singapore, that doesn't necessarily mean that Beijing can't get to it. Is, is that right? So I think the greater question here is the fact that the laws that apply to the parent company, ByteDance. Uh, so that is essentially the problem. There is a parallel app uh, in China, uh, which TikTok, ever since the CFIUS investigation came to light, has uh, potentially made some moves to sort of extricate uh, their, their dealings with you know, what actually goes on in China and to do so explicitly. Um, the Douyin app, which is the one in China, is basically like the parallel version of TikTok, but existing in China. So they've attempted to sort of shield themselves by saying, hey, everything in that people use on TikTok is U.S. or, you know, Western friendly nation based and stored in the U.S. and that kind of thing. But ByteDance, the, the 2017 acquisition of Musical.ly is what is being investigated in CFIUS right now. That is the problem. That is something we need to think about. The, the law that Klon discussed uh, would apply to TikTok's parent company, ByteDance in China. So ByteDance is, just to get the facts clear on this, ByteDance is the parent company of TikTok. ByteDance is located in China. It's a Chinese-based company. They are subject uh, to the laws, Mr. Kitchen, that you were talking about, including the 2017 National Intelligence Law, which requires Chinese organizations and companies to cooperate with state intelligence work. That's the designation in the law. Is that right, Mr. Kitchen? Uh, that's correct, sir. As, as a Chinese company, the, the parent company, who is bound by Chinese law, it's completely reasonable to assume that any individual's information, including the information of American users on that service, can be har harvested and exploited. And just one other point, technically this must be true. A lot of the development of this application is done in China still, even if it has an American uh, kind of front company or operating company. And so they have to be able to push updates from Chinese development into the U.S. market if they want to have an updated, increasingly capable technology. And so the idea that they can somehow meaningfully, technically kind of warden off this information from China doesn't make sense operationally. I think that's a really important point. So, so much of the app is, is developed, much of the content, much of the, what's used in the app is developed in China, is pushed to uh, users here in the United States. The parent company is a China-based company. They're subject to these uh, restrictions, or frankly, they're subject to having their doors opened at any time by the, communist, uh, the Chinese Communist Party under China's law. And uh, as uh, Alex Stamos puts it, uh, in today's Washington Post article, the leverage of the government, meaning the Chinese government, that it has over the people who has access to the data, that's what's relevant. Do you agree with that, Mr. Kitchen? In other words, the, the ability of Beijing to go to ByteDance, the parent company, and say, you are required under Chinese law to give us access to all of this data, it means that ByteDance could at any point scoop up American users' data and make that available to Beijing. Is that, is that fair to say? That's without a doubt true. Let me talk about some of the ways that TikTok uh, or other Chinese companies could abuse this kind of data. Mr. Kitchen, am I right in thinking that autonomous weapon systems rely on artificial intelligence so that they're able to uh, interpret and identify images? Is that correct? That's true. So if China obtains images of, say, our servicemen and women, either through social media or something like the OPM attack, uh, could that have relevance to how they train their, their AI and their autonomous uh, weapons? Uh, absolutely. In fact, one of the the um, criticisms of some of the image recognition that China has uh, developed up until this point is that it was xenocentric, that perhaps they weren't able to uh, operate in Western environments as well as they might. This would be a way of addressing that delinquency. Because of the sheer amount of data and, frankly, imagery that they will get of Western users. Is that what you're saying, Mr. Kitchen? Yes, sir. This will be my final question for you. How can we ensure that TikTok or other, other Chinese tech companies 
aren't Trojan horses that are gathering data on Americans and then sending that information back to China to be collected and gathered and, and used for the Beijing government's purposes. So you're asking me how we can ensure that? I'm not sure we can. Um, the law that I described simply requires access. And anyone who thinks that a Chinese company, even if they have an American you know, portion of their company, can look at the government in Beijing and tell them no, that's a fundamental misunderstanding of how the government in Beijing works. Thank you very much.